Sisters and brothers, grace to you in peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Rebecca Turnbaugh shared with me a recent episode of the podcast The Daily from the New York Times titled A Weekend of Pain and Protest. The focus was on the protests immediately following the killing of George Floyd at the hands of police. The journalist narrating the first segment described a video she had seen of a small group of protesters in Charlotte, North Carolina. There were two black men, one 45 years old, the other 31, and they're arguing passionately about the most effective way to protest as to have their voices heard. The older man believes that destruction and violence against property is the only way to make white people understand the pain black people experience every time a black person is killed by authorities. The 31-year-old, on the other hand, believes the violent protests are counterproductive because they only give those with power an excuse to dismiss black, the voices of black Americans and the true message behind the protests. The only thing they both agree on is how tired they are and how burdened by the knowledge that nothing seems to change. The men are shouting at one another, wanting to be heard. Their pain is evident in the cracking of their voices, particularly as they engage a black teenager who is 16 years old. The younger of the two men, the two older men, gets in the boy's face and tells him that violence will only lead to his own harm and that it's not worth it. That in 10 years, he will only be in the same place they are today. That unless this teen and his generation of black youth come up with a new way to have their voices heard, things will, th things will never change. Come to me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. The question for us is what does Jesus ask of us if the burdens are not immediately ours, but those of our fellow human beings? And what do we do when we do not know what to do that will make a difference? And that this in itself feels like a burden to us, to care deeply about the plight and the burden of our neighbor, but not to know how to act. Sometimes it feels like no matter what we do, we can't win. I know there are people out there who feel, feel like no matter how good their intentions, they will always be wrong. Like some people say we need to speak and others say we need to be silent. Maybe it's both, but it's hard to know what the truth is and it weighs heavy on us. So it feels like a trap that Jesus is holding out to us. Take this yoke upon you because the burden is light, Jesus says. And yet we know from other places in the gospel that the cost of discipleship is not small. It sounds less like a relief and a rest and a lot like more work for us. With social media and constant news cycles, we know so much about the world's pain, in addition to the pain and the struggles each of us deals with in our own spheres. It feels like we are the ones batted about between the children in the marketplaces. Or maybe, for a more modern update, the ones torn between Facebook and Twitter posts competing for our attention and action. Or between the skewed agendas of MSNBC and Fox News. Then there's Jesus telling us to take his yoke upon us too. Hmm. How do we know whose voice to listen to? Now I'll admit that as a city person, I don't know much about yoking. And Jesus uses this agricultural illustration with his disciples, assuming they would know just what he was talking about. But I do remember this one time in Michigan at the Henry Ford Village when I learned something about being yoked. At this place that is a recreated old-timey village, you can ride in a wagon that is pulled by two huge draft horses who are yoked together side by side. They even have cute names like Ted and Ned. The day that I was there, the driver explained how it works between these two horses. 
that Ned, the less experienced horse, was yoked with Ted, the more experienced one, so that he could learn from Ted how to pull the weight of the wagon. And in times when one of them is tired or not able to pull as much, the other steps up to take more of the burden. And if one is being lazy and holding back, the other pulls forward, encouraging the other to keep moving. They learn from one another and develop a rhythm that makes bearing the burden easier. I suddenly understood this invitation from Jesus a little better. He isn't saying that he will put a yoke on us as if he were the driver directing us to pull, a lo- to pull alone. He is inviting us to be yoked alongside him, to learn from him how we are to pull the weight of the world faithfully, and also when to rest a little and wait for the spirit of the risen Christ to pull us forward when we want to hang back and give up. Well, back to that podcast, The Daily, and the interaction between the protesters in North Carolina. The journalist narrating what she has gleaned from this video says that she hears hopelessness in the words and the voices of these two men. She can imagine the futility the older men feel after carrying this burden for so long with little change. But then she notes for the listener that for the sake of the boy in their midst, they do not leave it there. They must give him hope for a different future and a possibility that he and his generation can do things differently. Otherwise, he might as well burn it all down. Come to me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. This is as much an invitation as a promise. It sounds like we have a choice whether to take on this yoke or not. But the truth is that in our baptisms, we were yoked with Jesus into relationship with one another, made members in the body of Christ for the sake of the world. It can be a big task, and we might feel helpless and hopeless to tackle any of the huge problems that are facing humanity at this very moment. But our faith promises that the heft of the present burden leads us to true freedom. Jesus invites us to take this yoke upon us. And if we are all yoked together, then we are all pulling the weight with one another. There's a modern translation of the Bible called The Message. Maybe some of you have taken a look at it here and there. Sometimes it takes a hokey tone that makes me laugh. But several years ago, I came upon the translation of our passage from Matthew today, and it has stuck with me as a powerful reminder of Jesus' invitation. Come to me, get away with me, and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me, and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. The line I have held closely since first reading it is this one. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. Truly following Jesus' voice amid the din of competing sound bites is the work of discipleship. We sometimes get so lost that we find ourselves batted about between one false truth and another, between one or another opinion about what we should be doing or how we should act, between our own sense of guilt and our desire to do more. But our faith reminds us that we are not the ones in charge. Jesus is. And that apart from Christ, our work can become futile and even burdensome. But when our intentions are good, even when our intentions are good, but if we're listening to the wrong voices instead of Jesus, we can easily slip into hopelessness 
and exhaustion. Our freedom in Christ is not freedom from, but freedom to. Not freedom from the pain of the other, but freedom to enter one another's pain, knowing Jesus goes alongside us and alongside them. To know that Jesus doesn't let us hang back forever, but nudges and urges us toward a more beautiful future, one in which the promises of God's kingdom are fully realized. This is the hope that keeps us from burning it all down or giving up entirely. Taking Jesus' yoke upon us is about pulling the weight of the burdens of our fellow human beings, and when we don't know how to pull, listening and learning from those who have borne the burdens before, and above all, heeding the voice of Christ to follow and to join him in this work. Thanks be to God. Amen.